Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnell Man at YouTube with another model video. Today we'll be building, unboxing, finishing and reviewing the 4D Models Strum Tiger Self Mortar. Manufactured in mainland China, this line of models come in different configuration, detail, standards and quality. The 3D puzzle style models have only been recently released from date of making this video. 4D models is normally associated with educational, biology subjects, animals, machines and historical military such as machines and guns. At a lack of quality, scale and detail, they are the cheapest in the industry for snap pre-coloured kits that are recently made. The 3D puzzle line are a sorted collection of parts in a bag that have puzzle-like interlocking features and a set of instructions in the back which is fairly tiny and hard to make out. I had to take a photo and explode the image on a tablet. The tedious element, many of the components look exactly the same for the main hull with a number and letter etch in the back. You have to sort them out in what order they go together to snap fit them which they do tightly and cannot be pulled apart again. There is a certain order to prevent parts from being trapped from each other to the reason why some of the puzzle components needed to be nippered off with some wire cutters. There was a little bit of detail lacking compared to the reference picture on the front of the box. I had to saw a ring from a ball from the internals of the tank and glue it on the end of the barrel to make it look right. The rest of the proportion and size seemed to be okay. Each of the parts has a bit of flash and a post cut nub which needs to be filed off. Rubber tracks are included that you can glue and stretch over the actual wheel realm. A lot of the parts I decided to use PVA glue to stick together in pushing the glue out and filling all the gaps. The majority of the seams and gaps seem to be suitable to where armor panels would separate on the real tank. Besides the hull being very tedious and boring to assemble, the top component was fun and interesting in its configuration and detail. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It was a very quick build. I would recommend this for kids and wargamers alike. I already have reviewed a few of these and got a couple more to build, so we won't talk about the construction details as it will get too boring and tedious in the same repetitive quality. I did find this one to be a little more lacking compared to the last two built, especially in fitting. Utilising the battery powered APR 150 airbrush. Automotive grade lacquer filler primer was heavily thinned down with some retardant lacquer thinner. Uh, premium type and applied through the airbrush in a very low PSI and thin coat. None of the build had any flaws, issues and the seams looked ideal. We were ready to go straight into painting. I'm going to do a lot of uh, hand painting. So initially I just got three tones of desert yellow cream tan colors and did a build up from tark to light for color gradients on each of the panels. To give the effect of colour gradient shading naturally across the armour of the tank as if the light source being the sun was somewhere above it. The rest of the camouflage was hand painted using Tamir acrylics cut with thinner 50-50. The wheels were covered first and the outline of the camouflage was sketched out according to the box art. We only had one angle view to look at and the other half had to be freehand and imaginatively uh, designed. The oxidized red color which I didn't have in my stock at my current location was mixed with a bit of brown and black for a fairly effective scheme. The rest of the camouflage was applied by small dots of the appropriate colour on the appropriate slant of the armour being dot painted across the camouflage areas. It gave it a very nice hard edge look as if hand painted. 
With hand painting, the biggest issue is mostly brush strokes. So once that was done and allowed 24 hours to dry, I loaded the airbrush with some lacquer thinner and gave it a medium coat to reactivate the paint, self-level and dry so it looked a lot flatter and neater. You could also put a clear coat and sand it down with some 2000 grit sandpaper to completely level it, but that wasn't quite necessary. All other details such as the stowage, the wheels, the inner wheel rubber, the tank tracks were all hand painted. The box art does depict markings but the model didn't come with any stickers or water slide decals. Had some leftover trumpeter ones and utilised the German cross soaking it in water and transferring it across. They were immediately sealed in a clear coat followed by Mr Hobby rough matte base and coated in pigment and a wash. Everything was sealed with a clear matte varnish. This was a fairly easy and clean scheme to finish, including this model. I could have done it via airbrush and done all the small dots with masking. But felt like hand painting as I haven't done that for quite a while. A little bit of dusting on with weathering pigment makeup and sealing it, including on top of the decals, gave it a bit of a natural and softer look as if it's been slightly used or at least left out in the field. I was very happy in what I have achieved with this model. The Strum Tiger is a massive design with a huge barrel that would shoot a rocket propelled ordnant for demolition and uh, bunker busting though it does look quite terrifying as a tank or tank destroyer even though it was not originally designed or intended for combat use it's more of an engineering core vehicle though as things got desperate later on in the war uh, who knows how it was applied unless you've done quite a bit of uh, detailed reading and research on the uh, video game side of things it would probably be very fun to play with in a war funder World of Tanks game with such a strong ordnance. I find this variant of the Tiger very fascinating and fun. The uh, big barrel does bring a lot of awe and interest. I'm glad to have uh, built one. I believe I do have the Trumpeter one in my collection to build at a much later date. Though due to how cheap and recent this came out, it was just a must to build it as soon as I can and enjoy it as it is. The dot scheme among the hard edge camouflage strokes was a lot of fun and lend itself to a very interesting effect. The detail is extremely deep and it lended itself very well for hand painting, not clogging up at all. It took well to any washes and weathering and it built up to be quite a nice and interesting model to display. I would uh, definitely be keen to have this in my collection if I was wargaming or putting it on a large table. It is very strong, sturdy, heavy and I don't think it would damage too well in transport or regular handling and use. I'll go as far as to say that this would be an ideal children's toy as it would not uh, come across any issue with heavy playing unless you accidentally removed the tank tracks. This was applied with super glue so with that I think this piece is near indestructible. The water slide decals which I wish they would include definitely finish the whole look off. Well, this definitely concludes this video and model. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. Catch the description section down below. I'll put reference material and links to all my social medias where I show work in progress, finished models, and all sorts of news and other things that are happening around the channel. Catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching.